of the family. It's like a homecoming every time you come home. It's so lovely to be here. Hi, everybody. Hello. 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 So my big fat Greek wedding uh, was phenomenal the first time around. And you know what? It must be tough when you've got this incredible hit and then you're saying, I'm going to make part two. And we all know how often part twos go. This one held up the standard. So did you feel that pressure? Like, I have to make this as good as the first one? I guess it's out there, sort of like this ominous cloud of rain, but I just ignore it. I'm kind of a fearless idiot. <laughs> and I just good. sat down and quietly started writing where I thought the family might go. You yeah. know? And I thought in real time, I wanted to be respectful of the audience. All of you who saw my Big Fat Greek Wedding one, as it shall be named now. So I thought, well, we would have a teenage daughter. And um, of course, the minute she says she wants to go away to college, my reaction is the typical Greek mom, why do you want to leave me? <laughs> it's about you. Yeah, it's always about me, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 14 years in between the two. Yeah. Um, was it easy to get everybody, because you got everybody, every single person in the cast is back there for part two. Yes. Was that an easy sell? Well, I'm kind of an optimist because I wrote them all apart, not thinking, not knowing if they would want to come back, but yeah. I only had to make, I think by the time I made the third phone call, they had already started calling each other. Because <laughs> I called Andrea Martin and she was yeah. like, I know. <laughs> I know and I want to be part of yeah, this. Yeah, we are extremely close because, you know, you don't set out to make a hit. If yeah. you do, you are creatively dead. You mm -hmm. have to just try to make your best movie. So when we were making my Big Fat Greek Wedding 1, we were all on set. I didn't know we were low, low budget because, you know, I'm from Winnipeg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm in a movie! <gasps> I wore my own clothes in a lot of the right. shots, but we had <laughs> catering on the set. You know, we had real food and everything. So I was like, this is a real movie. It's amazing. And then when it started to break all the records and everything, I mean, you cannot have an ego in my family. You just can't because <laughs> My, I was home when the film cross broke some record, I don't know, and I was like, Mom, Mom, you know, hung up, and I was like, Mom, Mom, the film crossed whatever million it was, and my mom went, that's nice, take the chicken out of the oven. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I can relate to this experience. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's awesome, though, because you're so grounded, and, uh, you know, it, it's the thing that's made you this way. I want to know, for you on the set, you're the writer, uh, you're producing, directing, you're doing everything, and you're acting. How tough is that for you to be wearing so many hats? Um, you know, we I have real producers on set, and we have a director, and I love wearing a lot of hats. The truth yeah. of the matter is I'm a middle child, and I like to put out fires. And so if there's a problem, I tend to run to it, like, how can I help? <laughs> right. And, so there, and this, this cast really loves each other, so it's not like there's a diva on set or anybody that you have to worry about. It's kind of freeing to... Yeah. Um, create this material and then watch my lines come out of these incredible actors' mouths. It takes a village, a Greek village, <laughs> and, <laughs> and everyone came with their A game. And uh, you know, I call Michael Constantine uh, my favorite scene partner on the days that I'm working with him, and then I work with John Corbett, and we're kissing, and I'm like, no, you're my favorite scene partner. <laughs> You. You're really my it's favorite. You. Yeah, it's yeah. you. Uh -huh. We had a little chat before, uh, you know, during the commercial break, just talking a little bit about roles for women. Mm -hmm. And so you sit down and you will write. That's what you're going to do this summer. That's your process. And I wonder about how tough it is to be a self-starter to make yourself write. And you tell me you will write because? Because there are very few roles for women and I'm not going to cry about it and I'm not going to whine about it. My goal is to write roles for women and that's what I did in my Big Fat Greek Wedding too. Mm -hmm. But also I wrote roles roles for men because the goal is parity, just equality. Um, the audience has to be reflected on screen. Like if there's a scene in NASA and it's in the control room and if a photographer goes and takes a picture of that scene, there are equal men and women scientists watching a space shuttle go up. But if Hollywood shoots that movie, it will just be men in white shirts and black home room glasses. It'll look like the cast of Book of Mormon. <laughs> Do not know. I don't know. 
So if Hollywood's not going to take care of showing us on screen, I'll just keep doing it. I'll just keep writing. So I make myself write every day. It's not mm -hmm. fun. It's lonely. There's a voice in your head saying, you're a fraud. No one's going to buy this. But you just have to go, shut up. And keep writing. Yeah, uh -huh. and that's what you do. Yeah. So, can you give us any hints about what might be coming up? Oh, that's so. Um, I, I'm currently rewriting a play that I'm going to be doing in the fall. Nice. I optioned a book called Tiny Beautiful Things, written by Cheryl Strayed, um, and we're going to do it at the Public. Um, I'm going to star in the play, directed by Tommy Kale of Hamilton. Oh, very nice. <laughs> yeah. What's the difference between doing film and uh, and live theater? Do you have different loves for each of those? Well, for one, you have a makeup artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, I love the live theater because there's no hiding behind yeah. uh, anything. There's no second take. You just have to um, bring the emotions of that day onto the stage with you. I learned that here at Second City in Toronto. Just be who you are that day, and it's a way of expressing yourself creatively. Yeah. I'm scared, and that's why I'm doing it. I have to do things that terrify me. That thing that I say about being a fearless idiot, that doesn't mean that you're, I'm brave. It's that I tend to take on things that um, make me go, no, no. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lesson for everybody, though. That's how you need to be living life, and that's how you're, you're slaying all these goals, which is amazing. So, um, A Big Fat Greek Wedding 2 is out on DVD. You know, people are loving watching movies, television, everything at home in their beds, maybe while eating some snacks. Yes. Why not? Yes. So this is what's happening. It's happening in television. It's happening in film. Now people get an opportunity to watch this one at home on DVT. On DVD. So my big fat Greek wedding too is now out. Our audience will all take one home. Yeah. Yeah. Extras this time, there are behind the scenes fun little tidbits. There's a blooper reel. Ooh. There's a sit down where we sit down with the cast and all ask each other questions then and now. It's all on the Blu ray DVD, and if you download it digitally as well, it's there too. I love it. Enjoy! Yeah. We love it.